Each seminary class has been assigned a Canvas online resource tool. The uh, church educational system has invested heavily in Canvas to use as a tool to assist us using an online resource to help students come to know and understand the atonement of Jesus Christ and prepare themselves and their families to have a relationship with Heavenly Father and to prepare themselves to go to the temple. And so that's our objective, right? What we're trying to work on. And so Canvas has been something they've invested in and the students are pretty familiar with it. Many of the students use this, whether it be with a university setting future that they'll be at or at the high school that they're at currently or even middle school. Canvas is one of the most uh, common tools for online learning. And if you ask many of your students, that many of them will have had experiences or have an account with Canvas. But we've been given access to it, and each of your seminary classes have a Canvas class attached to it. It used to be only online seminary teachers would have it. And those online seminary teachers, you would use a module each day to teach a lesson where the students logged on at their convenience. And then once a week, they have a live class. Well, many of you are in some kind of a hybrid format right now. Some of you may still be completely all using Zoom. Others of you turning by each state president. Some of you may be back in a hybrid format where you have two or three days in the building or two or three days on Zoom. And some teachers use Canvas as a tool to help them as they're teaching on that Zoom class. The state presidents have also been given access to this as a use for a sub. And so many of the state presidents have indicated that they would like the use of this Canvas class as a sub for the Zoom lessons. But if you're in the building, they would like to get a, a physical sub. But again, each state may have a different application of use of it. However, Canvas becomes a great tool for makeup work as well. So I wanted to spend a couple of minutes with you on showing you what Canvas looks like. There's a mat, there's a bunch of resources that are made available to us that we can click on at our own convenience and study little two minute clips about how to set up Canvas or download the app or different things are like that. But right now I'm just going to do a quick overview with you to show you how you might be able to use it as a sub or as a makeup work. Um, we're not going to worry about building lessons or editing much. We're just going to kind of go through and use the basic format. So the website is SILearn dot church of Jesus Christ dot org. So S I learn all one word dot church of Jesus Christ dot org. When you click on that and and enter it, then you'll come to a dashboard that looks like this. In your case you'll have two classes. You'll have our our regional Simmery Institute training class. And then you also have your own class for your Simmery class. It may look it will look just like this as a default. So when you click on your class, where the top is going to have your stake, it'll have your class. This is uh, the second part of the year, right? Uh, it's the first semester, but second half of the Book of Mormon curriculum. And then your name is a teacher. And so on here, then you have this default with a button that lets them go straight to the modules. You're allowed to edit this if you'd like. And just notice that this publish button is critical. If you click unpublish, It'll turn off this class that students won't have access to it. But if you click on the edit button, you'll be given access to edit your home screen that you might want to put a quote or a picture within your own contact information and then the, that button again that allows you to go to the modules. One of the things to consider when you're looking back at this course is that this can be used also for announcements that you can send out to students, but they'll want to make sure they identify in the settings their notifications are set to where they're seeing these. And that'd be a different training and a little video clip on here. If you go back to our training page, when you click on it, can we show you what you click on when you click on your class, what you see? This is our training page. And so you'll see recent announcements that we maybe had up there. You'll see a quote we have of President Nelson visiting with us about the importance of our time. Then you have different buttons on here. Most recent trainings, uh, new teacher training. Uh, to If you want to set up a time to visit with me via Zoom rather than call me. Access to WISE, contact information, and these other resources that we have set for you. That would be just nice to use at your convenience in the summer particularly. But in this case, this Canvas, Canvas training button brings you into these a bunch of different resources here installing the app 
So you want to install this the Canvas teacher app, but you'd also want to install this, the Canvas student app, and parents would want to install the Canvas parent app. When you first download it, it'll say find my school, and you would put in silearn.churchjesuschrist.org, the website. You can probably still find it, the school, with silearn.lds.org. And then also we've had some success with seminary and institute, three words. So you would download and find the school, and it would bring up your dashboard. But when you go through, and for example, basic navigation, which is kind of what we're talking about right now, it would then give you a little video clip that talks to you about how to basically navigate uh, Canvas and the tool it can be in, in yours with, with again, a, about a two-minute training on it, getting started step-by-step, step, managing announcements. And so these are just some different tools that will help you uh, that if you'd like to spend some time studying on it. But we're going to come back into what your class looks like. We're going to recognize that it's it's got a bunch of resources here we're not going to go into right now. We're simply going to focus on the modules. And the modules, when you click on the module, it's going to bring up this, this list of all your modules. Now, they're opened up right now. And so what you're going to notice on this is that if it's gray here, it's unpublished. Now, you see a bunch of green along here. That means that these pages are published when the class is turned on. Currently, this lesson is turned off. And so that's the way it is for all of these. Now, you'll notice some of these lessons are turned off. This page is turned off, for, for example, and this page is turned off. It might be because there's a broken link in it, or the teacher just didn't want to use it, or the page got added uh, with the latest sync. So you want to go with that and see if you want to turn that on or turn it off. It depends on you. And you may opt to turn off some of these pages. Maybe you feel like there's a little bit of a long lesson if you're going to use it as a guide in your class that we'll talk about in just a minute. But if you do turn it off, please be mindful that there might be a requirement on the next page that the student complete the page prior to then move forward. So you'd have to turn that feature off. It starts getting a little more complicated. I recommend just leaving it all on until you become more comfortable with Canvas. The key on this is to recognize these classes are turned off. Now, one of the things that might help is to go through and spend some time clicking on these buttons that would then minimize the screen so that your lessons are all tight. And if you'll notice, these lessons are all off. If you turn all the lessons on, it does make for a lo loading to take some time. So you want to be cautious about that. But let's go down here and look at, for example, they've got one class on right now. So this is the today's class, October 23rd, and that class is turned on. And so when the students go on their app and they pull up their app, it will only show that one class. One of the nice features that Canvas gives us is to allow us to see a student view, so how students are seeing this. So if you go back and click on your home page, go back and look at student view. When you click on student view, it brings up your uh, a student aspect of it. And so we click on modules, and now this is the only module they can do. It's the only one available for them. Now, if you were to minimize that and you were to have a bunch of different modules turned on, for example, you may want to set up a, a makeup weekend in which you turn on three or four classes or a week's worth of classes or two weeks worth of classes. At that point, only those classes would appear. Uh, we would recommend having some makeup weekends and Canvas is how we do our makeup work. Uh, makeup weekends allow you to turn on a block of makeup work that would be available for students who need one or two days or uh, maybe five or six days where you can turn those on. There's no way to make it to where only one student is to see it. You can't make it where John sees the lessons he missed and Sarah sees the lessons she missed. Once you publish this class, then all the students that are registered in that class will have access to that day. So what a lot of teachers have found to be successful is to turn on a bunch of different days um, and allow students to go in that need four, five, six, seven, whatever makeup days, and they have weekends to do it. We recommend you do that after about a week or two or to go back and do a week or two past because if the students are given the Saturday, Sunday of each week to do makeup work, 
they will typically then find themselves becoming more casual with attending your live class and just doing the classes on the weekend. That's not our objective. And so you'll wait a little bit for that lesson. For example, tomorrow this lesson will be turned off, and at which point you would turn this back on maybe in two weeks to let students do the makeup lesson for that. But let's take a second to go into and what this looks like for a lesson itself. Now, as we said earlier, you can see these these pages are on. So that's what the students will be able to access. Let's go back to a previous lesson. Let's just take the one from yesterday. Here again, the pages are on, but the class lesson is off. So students didn't have access to it as we saw when we looked here in the student view. They only have access to, the, to today's lesson. But let's just go through for the sake of us looking at this as a resource, maybe for your own class as on Zoom. Um, I know we're seeing some blank screens, videos, all, cameras off. I know we're seeing our ceiling fans of students at times. One of the things that might help you as a teacher is to click on this lesson, uh, share your screen. Oh, I'm in a student view. Let's leave student view. See, the students wouldn't have access to it. So we go into it as um, on our end of it with our access rights, and then we share our screen in Zoom, and the students are seeing this page. We would listen to the opening hymn. Let's say Bill gives us the prayer, and then he answers this question for the spiritual thought, or um, Mary does. It doesn't matter how you break up your devotional. And then you watch the video together as a class. It's just going to be a brief two-minute video. One of the first commandments given to Adam In was that case, he should work. A minute and 10 seconds. And then you would click on next. And the students have to click on this mark is done at the top. If you look at student view, they would have an option here, mark is done. And so if a student's confused, go look at the student view. And you can see what they're seeing. So you can kind of counsel them how to move forward. But this is my class, and I'm going to use this to help create variety in my lesson today. I might then say, all right, John, would you now read uh, this analogy Elder Lund gave us? And let's look for this learning strategy. What would you do to remember someone who's saved your life? And then click Next after the students might have some discussion on it, where they share their opinions or thoughts on it. And then you would just follow the 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 slides and just go next to each one working your way through the lesson and so it creates some some already set things now when you click on these links it'll bring the scripture up right there in front of you so the students will see the scripture right there it'll bring up a new tab and there it is for you to go back to and then at the very top of your screen you just click your tab back to it but now your students are all seeing the same page that's very helpful if they're using their phones and their scriptures are part of their phone. So you go through and you could utilize that. Everyone's looking at the same thing. How would you mark this? What would you do? You click next to the next screen. Read this verse. Use what you learn in these verses. How would you complete the following statement as a principle? As we partake of the sacrament, we witness unto the Father that. Now, in this case, they have this as a participatory um, discussion page but for you and your class they could talk live right there or you could say in the chat box would you please answer this question and so once again you just have some tools the students to enter into it if they're doing makeup work or if you're sick and it's a zoom day it would not be as effective to have a sub for a zoom day if they don't have access to the link they don't know how class works they may not be familiar with zoom so you may have a problem or you're on vacation for a couple of days. You could use Canvas as your sub. The students can come here. They enter their replies. You maybe check in at lunchtime for about 10 minutes to add your comments. Come back before you go to bed, add your comments or look over and reply to what they said by clicking here. Wow, that was a great comment. Thank you. Or I had not seen that or I appreciate where you looked at that. By students clicking reply, it opens the ability for them to write. And then once they submit it, they then see the students' the students' comments to then comment on them. After that, you go to the next page, remembering him. Again, you would have this statement, how does partaking the sacrament help us remember the Savior's sacrifice on our behalf? And so that would be a class discussion if you're doing this live or if it is um, on 
uh, on makeup day, they would then click, you know, the edit feature, the reply feature, and they could then add their thoughts and comments. These Canvas gives you some tools with video clips embedded that are not part of your regular lesson manual. So it adds some variety to the class if you're going to use this in conjunction with your Zoom lesson. Now, I, I don't know that I would do it every day because it might just become routine as well. It might become a little mundane, but it may not. If you've got a very quiet class and they don't comment, they don't talk, then this having video clips and scriptures right there pop up, quotes, the student may be willing to read a quote, maybe willing to answer a question in a chat box, but um, for a quiet class, maybe this does become a very, very helpful tool for you. But ultimately, the objective of this of this is to have an additional resource in teaching or doing makeup work or as a sub. So we'd invite you to use Canvas as your sub when you're sick out with with um, a Zoom lesson. Uh, we don't actually have a concern. S and I has doesn't have a concern if you use it as your permanent sub for anything, whether it be an in the building lesson or um, on a Zoom class, the the local state presidents will actually determine what's best for them in that case. And so uh, unless you hear otherwise, you could just work with what we've counseled with that. But for example, I know one stake that has made the decision, uh, it's the Lake City stake, they made the decision that on their Monday, Friday in the building classes, uh, they would get subs for that. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, where they use a Zoom link, they would then get us to use Canvas for the sub there. And then all stakes, Canvas is your makeup tool. So a student needs to do makeup work. They need to go in. You turn on a lesson for them. If you want to find a lesson they missed, that's great. It's not necessary. They can go back through and see a different lesson experience that you provided in the classroom or on Zoom one day. They would have a different experience with this lesson here. So it would be fine for them to repeat a, a chapter, especially if it's the teachings of the Savior. So I just encourage you to look at, go back into our Canvas uh, training tool set at our dashboard. In our class, you'll click on the, the Canvas button and look at these. But your students um, do have and have been enrolled in your Canvas class. Now, it may take a bit to get them all to where they, they see it, and you may spend time in class having them download the app, find the school, come up and see the lessons, and be able to start kind of making sure they can maneuver it, check their notifications, Again, you can learn how to do this and actually walk them through it if you'd like, um, even pulling this up and sharing your screen as a lesson. It may be uh, not a lesson you or they would have wanted to do, but if you spend some time doing that, it would be a great tool for you if you're out of town and yet you can still facilitate this lesson. Because if you're going to be out of town on Wednesday and maybe you had Monday, Wednesday, Fridays in your building, Tuesday, Thursday, Zoom, so you're going to just say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week, we're going to use a Canvas because I'm going to be traveling. The feature now that you've spent time in the class helping them get familiar with it now becomes a great tool that while you're traveling, you're still the one interacting with the students. They're answering it at their, their convenience. And then on the weekend, you may want to then turn it on because uh, you were traveling. It did go into Canvas. Maybe they didn't get it done and you want to help them do the makeup work. It's not something that's normal where we typically might not wait the two week um, for for turning on makeup work because we as a teacher created the abnormal pattern that week. If you do use this as your sub, you need to make sure students know that. And you can do that by making an announcement where you click on there and say this week on these days we're using Canvas. As your class, um, it'll be turned on and you can uh, take care of that assignment at your convenience. Um, you'll want to make sure they know that so they don't come to the building and find it, it empty or click on the live Zoom link and find you not there if you're particularly sick. So make sure you do have a um, text thread or and use the announcements to make sure word gets out to parents and students that you're unfortunately uh, unwell and need to use Canvas for a lesson that day. I hope this helps. I hope this helps you become a little more familiar with it. And I appreciate your time um, looking at this and seeing how it might be a resource to you. Your supervisors have been recently trained with this and will be able to help you. I would invite you to reach out to them. Also, if you go to YouTube, there are a thousand other 
uh, training resources for Canvas that you might want to play with, become more familiar with it as you move along with it. Hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you later.